Welcome to this demonstration of VMware Hyperconverged Infrastructure's automated deployments. In this demonstration, I will showcase VMware's open source DevOps automation toolkit called Chaperone, and I will demonstrate a DevOps infrastructure management model by using the extensible capabilities of some of the VMware programmable APIs to create an infrastructure deployment and configuration model that is fully based on DevOps principle. This model introduces the ability to perform a fully automated installation and deployment of an environment designed to run on a hyperconverged infrastructure that is composed of vSphere, Virtual SAN, NSX, and vSphere Integrated OpenStack. So before we jump into the demo, uh, let me provide a logical explanation for some of the actions that will be performed in this demo. But before we get started, let me quickly mention that the use of user interfaces in this demo are only for the sole purpose of demonstrating process updates. Uh, obviously, uh, mostly when I'm going to be referring to what's going to happen with a chaperone and what's going to happen with vSphere Integrator OpenStack itself. Um, you'll see some of the things that, are, that are, I'm going to be doing, but in a traditional DevOps model, there's not much use of a user interface. I'm only, again, going to use it here to show the update of some of the tasks that are happening within the environment. You will not see this sort of approach in a real world where you know, the chaperone tasks will be executed from you know, a CLI. Uh, as for the same thing when it comes to deploying or, or consuming uh, VIO, uh, most of these things when it comes to consuming the cloud resources, configuring the network and the storage and any of the compute related functions, they're very easily consumable through APIs and a developer would really not go through a, a UI like Horizon or anything like that, but basically, you know, just kind of do this from a CLI. So I just wanted to get that out there. I also want to mention that, you know, in the DevOps space, uh, this particular demo is largely focusing on what's called infrastructure code as code arena. Uh, since DevOps mainly is uh, focused around version control, config management, et cetera, some of those things. So I just kind of wanted to set the stage for this really quickly. All right, so let's get started. So I'll begin the demo by basically starting and logging into the Chaperone web portal interface. Again, just to start the tasks of what's going on there. I launched the, the task to begin a deployment and configuration jobs. Uh, the infrastructure is then going to be sort of uh, begin the instantiation of all of these components. Uh, the infrastructure will begin by uh, the configuration of two separate execution zones in the form of a clusters, as you can see here. And from a vSphere perspective, uh, there'll be a lot of the vSphere related constructs created, such as you know, the virtual data center, uh, creating the particular clusters as you see here, uh, configuring the networks and creating the port groups uh, along there. After that, we'll then see how the beginning of the different individual hosts will be added to the individual clusters. Uh, at that point, uh, you'll see a lot of the functions when it comes to configuring virtual SAN, which is the actual storage platform here. We'll claim the disks, make sure that everything is correct. Once the disks are claimed and created, uh, the data store will be actually uh, forming in the individual clusters. There will be a renaming of the actual data stores to name them accordingly to where they're located. Uh, and you'll also see that some of the vSAN performance health monitoring tools and capabilities will also be enabled. At that point, we'll then start the process for deploying the NSX Manager OVA. Once the NSX Manager OVA is deployed, there's a lot of the functions that happen in the background to prepare the infrastructures for NSX, such as preparing the host, uh, making sure some of those things are obviously all in place uh, to continue the sort of configuration process. Uh, we'll then connect the manager to the SSO of vCenter, create the different controller IP pools, deploy the actual controllers themselves, um, configure and create the, the VTIP and the IP pool, and then configure VXLAN. And also at the same time, we'll be able to then create um, uh, the uh, segment IDs and then create the different transport zone that will be available. And as part of that, we'll create the, also the, uh, the micro segmentation of that particular environment to make things very nicely there. Um, after that point is done, you'll see that uh, we'll be in the deployment of the VIO V app. In that particular case, uh, the VIO cluster deployment uh, is basically instantiated all through the OMS. 
uh, the OMX takes care of that uh, particular process there. Obviously, you'll see there's a lot of different, uh, not a lot, but a couple of different appliances that are part of that, which are then are prepared to sort of get to uh, the development environment, which is what we're trying to get our developers to get to. Uh, that entire process is being completely automated. Uh, and once that's done, uh, the dev environment will be created and will be readily available so that we can actually uh, then at that point uh, instantiate or, or run another task from the chaperone uh, tool so that we can prepare and provide the different configurations to that particular environment based on what is needed for the individual users and the individual instances that want to be used. And once ready, all the developers can actually begin to do what they're supposed to do and start developing applications. So let's get going. All right, and here, as I said, we're looking at the uh, Chaperone UI, uh, specifically, again, just kind of looking at what the, uh, the tool can do here if we have different deployment uh, models. So very quickly, we're just going to look at the install and prepare actions that are here, or options, uh, and get started. So here we're going to just, before I start, let me go look at the vCenter server so that everyone can see that it's completely empty and not really configured, but just barely deployed. There aren't any vSphere-related constructs in here. So now uh, I'll go back into the Chaperone UI here. You see the install sort of uh, tasks, and I'm going to start the task. This Ansible task will get kicked off from here. And now you can see the actual process that I mentioned before. So obviously, you can see how some of the components uh, and some of these uh, artifacts are being created. As I mentioned before, there's a data centers, the clusters are being formed, the distributed switches are being created, the port groups, uh, the hosts are being added. Uh, and then you can also see how the uh, the hosts are also then being added to the different distributed switches and the different port groups, and also the creation of the different and individual VM kernel interfaces for the different networks and VLANs that are being used in that particular infrastructure. Uh, to take a look at here some of the progress, you can see that I refreshed the vSphere web client, and you can see how uh, the data center has been created. There's the two different execution zones in the form of cluster, the management, and the compute. The hosts are already there. Now we look at the network configuration, and here you have a distributed switch and all the different port groups that are part of the actual configuration. So things are moving along pretty nicely. So we're at the point here where the storage components of that infrastructure are being configured. So obviously virtual SAN now at this point is being prepared. You can see how those settings are being uh, pulled out in terms of tasks. Uh, those tasks are being executed there. And lastly, we do the virtual SAN performance and health service, which is being configured uh, here, as you can see here, once the disks are claimed, the data source are formed, uh, there's one particular step that's being done here to actually rename the data source themselves. So there'll be a, uh, the name will be applicable to the cluster that they belong to. Remember, the one of them is resource, the other one is um, uh, uh, management. Now, at this point, you can see here uh, we are importing the NSX uh, manager. Once the NSX manager is deployed, again, the NSX manager. Uh, is then registered with vCenter, uh, connected to uh, the NSX manager to SSO. We then create the actual controller IP pools. We proceed with the preparation of the hosts, uh, deploy the actual controllers. And here I'm going to show you very quickly um, the progress and what it looks like from a vCenter perspective, uh, what's going on so far. So if I refresh uh, the vCenter web client one more time, you should be able to now see here how the managers fully deploy the management cluster. They're the three controllers. Obviously, um, part of the deployment and some of the preparation there. Uh, so we, as, as we look here, some of the other tasks that are being uh, performed, uh, NSX uh, gets to the point where some of the, the functions that could be, you know, even a little bit uh, uh, delay as they take a bit of time depending on the functions and what's being done. But if we go and look at now uh, the VC Web Client, you can see that clearly the plugin has been registered. So let's look at some of the actual configuration within the NSX Manager. Here you can see the manager deployed, the three controllers, the clusters configure uh, and prepare correctly, right? All done without having to touch any single infrastructure component. Uh, so it's very useful, very powerful, and kind of meets the point of what we're trying to achieve here. Uh, kind of stop thinking about the infrastructure and get away from it. At this point, the uh, vSphere Integrated OpenStack deployment is taking place. Uh, all of these functions are happening through 
the OMS, the OMS server. Uh, through obviously there's the, the JSON file that kind of takes care of that. All those configurations are kind of being done through there. Uh, but it's very quickly done in a sense that we don't have to kind of go through that lengthy um, wizard that's available for, for Vio. And as you can see here, the tasks are being performed very nicely, very quickly here. And it makes it so that the, the APIs are very, you know, are very consumable in this particular approach uh, when it comes to uh, the way that, that some of these tools interact and, and how uh, they're going to work. You can see here how the appliance, the VF appliance is deployed, the, the manager, and then there's the template out from where everything is instantiated from. Uh, we take a quick look at the plugin just to identify the, um, the, the status of the, the instance deployment. You can see here that the deployment is kind of almost done. It's at a 55%, 72%, depending on how many times I refresh here. But you can track the individual tasks uh, in the actual uh, chaperone UI here, which you will probably be doing this from a, you know, from a CLI, and you can see the same results, same things. Uh, but in this case, uh, just for the purpose of showing it to the vSphere admins, as well as you know the ones that are interested in the more DevOps approach, you can see that here. You can clearly see both worlds. So now here we can clearly identify that at this point the uh, vSphere integrated OpenStack instance has been deployed. You see the uh, combination in, in, in registration with, v, with vSphere. Here are some of those relative IPs with regards to the systems that are in place. Validating the configuration of the storage that's currently available. Here obviously being virtual SAN, greatest thing ever created. Um, and now we're going to look at some of the different components that are assigned to the different uh, groups and functions within Vio. So the node of storage, devices, and all of those things. So obviously in this particular case, everything has been done uh, without having to touch anything. And the infrastructure is kind of ready to go. Now the point is to now take advantage of the infrastructure being ready. And from an end user perspective, now we launch the actual configuration and the instantiation of those different environments where here we're going to leverage the configuration of the infrastructure to then uh, deploy and configure the micro segmentation, the different environments that are in place. Uh, and you can see that by simply instantiating that, uh, executing that task, uh, all these sort of uh, templates, you know, things that are environments that have been pre created within the uh, VIO infrastructure uh, can be automatically provisioned and, and deployed and simply allow these developers to, you know, to immediately once things are instantiated, get to their development environment. Basically showcase and demonstrate the, the capabilities of, of infrastructure deployment and management and configuration uh, in a DevOps models, particularly for hyper-converged infrastructure, which are partially composed of potentially other products and other tools that are part of the VMware portfolio of products. You can see how this is very useful, very nice, and actually and it can be something that is uh, scalable and adaptable 20 potential uh, real world in a real infrastructure. And that's about it. Thank you for watching.